Jerry, your company was socially responsible before that really was in vogue. How did you inculcate that into your business? I think uh, it was an evolutionary process for Ben and me to want to have Ben and Jerry's be uh, more of a socially responsible company. In the beginning, we were, we were just trying to be a little community-based company and have little festivals and whatever. And I think as the business became more successful, we started to understand the role that business plays in society and that we could have a bigger impact. So it has to be gratifying that the market really has moved to a point where most businesses see it as responsible and as good business to be socially responsible. How do you see that? I mean, how do you see that evolution? There has been an enormous shift and uh, some of it comes from companies themselves, some of it comes from entrepreneurs. I think a lot of it comes from consumers who are insisting that uh, businesses be more concerned about what goes on in society. And uh, you know, it's, it's interesting the power that people in the marketplace have when, when consumers speak, businesses listen. And you mentioned in your remarks that uh, the fair trade, uh, and then now there's also locally sourced is also very important. Is that something that you guys followed at Ben and Jerry's? Were you looking to get your milk from Vermont Farms? Were you, was that something that was in your thinking at the time? Yeah, you know, when, when we look at the impacts that Ben & Jerry's has, a lot of it is just in our ingredients that go into the ice cream. It's, we're big users of milk and cream, and then you think of the flavorings and whatever, and I think looking at the ingredients and what, what we think of as values-led sourcing has become a primary concern of the company. It started off with Vermont milk, uh, then it became uh, hormone-free milk. Uh, we try to get uh, products like brownies from bakeries that are doing good work in the community. And, and now the most recent is, is the company's commitment to become 100% fair trade uh, globally for 100% of our products by the end of 2013. So that uh, I, I think uh, that's going to become quite a challenge logistically for the folks at Ben & Jerry's. Everybody is completely on board philosophically. It's how do you make it happen? I mean, I think it's 120 or more different ingredients and add-ins. So there's, there's a little bit of uh, work to be done. Now, you just spoke to our audience this evening, and it was your message was very well received. What do you, what do you hope that the audience and, and those, those entrepreneurs that you spoke with tonight, what do you hope that they take away from your remarks? I find that uh, there are a lot of people in business who are concerned about social or environmental issues and they want to have those as part of their business, but they either don't know how to do it or they don't know if it's going to make them less profitable or less likely to succeed. And what I try to share with people is, Ben's in my experience, that uh, not only will it not make you less successful, in our case it made the company much more successful, and just because the conventional wisdom says one thing doesn't mean that it's true. So. I, it's not that you have to run a business this way. You can run a business in so many different ways. It's just that if you're a business person who wants to integrate social and environmental concerns into your day-to-day -day business, you can do it and be incredibly successful.